uh, it yeah. could be anything so so we are live so i am doing this on my english channel right so that more people would be able to grasp and the thing is do you is australia is your region i believe it's active with cricket do you watch cricket na nah, but my mom she loves her cricket go come on australia come on <laughs> let's go let's go oh what the hell calm down Is she it? loves her sport. She absolutely. She's very, very cheerful. It's like, uh, alrighty. Me, well, uh, uh, I, I love my medieval stuff. Knights bashing the living shit out of other knights. It's just like, oh wow. I would hate to do the sport myself because when I see this, like one time I saw this knight had this two-handed sword, mm. smacked him right in the legs. Mm. knocked them to the ground and he grabbed the shield and he started bashing the helmet oh my oh my god <laughs> that dude's going to have a concussion it's um, that, that, that's my that's my kind of thing in india it's you would know you would probably know in india it's like a religion you know oh, yeah, cricket and all that yeah yeah oh, cricket yeah. cricket is like has become like a religion so just a minute just a minute um yeah So the thing is um just a minute we are seeing so I am I am facing some technical issues I don't know why so I got my modem rebooted for the timing but what we'll do is if you are not able to you know go for a live stream we'll just record a podcast and then upload it yeah. it's the same thing yeah doesn't yeah. matter so it's the same thing so what I'll do is um just a minute there is the, the OBS studio is not showing this just a minute matthew oh good mm okay i had a podcast with one youtuber who who is a big name here when it comes to science and all but uh, the pseudo science yeah right? yeah pseudo oh, science science is awesome what was that science like? is dope yeah. science is dope science is dope yeah 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 so that yeah, guy that pops around Yeah, so ripping it to shreds. Yeah, we were, we were. That guy gets too much of hatred back here in India because people are too much into the world of God men. You know, Sadguru. You would have heard his name, Sadguru. So people are all mad for him, and and that guy goes on. Yeah, we are, was... we are live again. We are live again. By the way, uh, oh, yeah. so people, people. That guy. I had a rift with that guy. uh because uh, you know i was too much into that uh, i am having this epitome of knowledge and who are you to say this about someone you are seeing the negative side of satguru and you should be seeing the positive side the shit he's been doing for people but as as i matured along my way um so i apologize uh, apologize to that guy you know sorry for my behavior and he did that from his side and the thing is we had a podcast so this guy we are having a couple of youtubers back here in india who are using this term spirituality in a very vague manner right uh, so it's not mm. ha- so like it's not having any metaphysical sense it's just you know um, trying to uh, embrace the what you can say the the fad which is going in and around about sp- uh, on spirituality you would have come across many people who are like we are spiritual yeah Oh yeah, yeah. It's very common here yeah. as well. It's just like, oh man, so spiritual. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't run my zen, bro. Yeah. I'm just like, fuck off. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, it's just it, it gets so annoying. It's like you're in, you're you're, you're approaching my safe zone, my safe bubble, man. Mm-hmm. Don't answer it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, people these spiritual people uh, whenever you uh, trigger them you know whenever you touch their triggers they're shitting their pants but you know but still they are trying oh, yeah. to show themselves as very calm very composed right what we were talking about yeah. uh, in the in the last live stream about calm and composure which is the real meaning of calm and composure and what these people are preaching hmm. is just they are angry to the core and i i i oh, yeah. let you know this one thing the 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 vegan protest that you were telling about the other day so mm. I, i i guarantee my ass that there would have been a couple of people who would be very spiritual in, th- in that protest 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. These spiritual yeah, yeah. people they, are the yeah. ones who are vegan, right? So yeah. they are like this. This vegan food is no. Sorry, this non-vegetarian food, animal product is like a barrier, a hindrance to our spiritual journey. So we do not yeah. eat fucking meat. So that is what it is. And um, I want to meet someone like that. I just want to have a fucking debate with that person. You know, it just rip him into shreds. Yeah. And <laughs> Don't worry. If we go to Australia, don't worry. I'm sure we can find some out there. And the thing is, uh, and the thing is, I, I know people uh, back there. I had a debate in in one group. So there were a couple of people who were a couple of people were French there, right? A German mm-hmm. and um, I believe he, uh, another person was from, was from Luxembourg. So these they they were I mean, ha- in Europe. Yeah, in Europe. So they were having this um, debate on something which was, I believe, atheism and theism, and somewhere along mm-hmm. the lines of agnosticism. And this guy, I I caught him right. I caught him yeah. off guard. Uh, and this guy started, you know, uh, personally attacking me. You shitty Indians. You you are just dogs, and you should be working. And you you are the la- the real labels of this world. And that is what this that guy because I knew and I was there. I was <laughs> I. I you know, well, you, know you know you won as soon as they do that you know you won yeah that's how debating works as soon as someone insults you like got him yeah and that guy was personally attacking me and I was I was I muted my mic off and I was laughing my ass and the thing was I was like bro I got you there and you know you're mm. fucked up and now you are trying to cover your shit so this is not how mm. the world works and this is what people are doing so I have made i made a video on this is there is this one big motivational speaker in our country who is having around 20 million subscribers on youtube and what oh, this guy nice. does is what this guy does is sh- tries to show you the rainbow and sunshine of this world of this filthy world trying to cover this world with filters and all these kids mm. 13 to uh, 20 24 all these kids watch him very religiously and he's he will he might become a god in this country his name is sandeep maheshwari he's a businessman right and mm-hmm. the thing is and the thing is i made a video against the people watching him people wasting their lives away in the name of motivation i got yeah. around 130 dislikes on that video and some 100 likes that is mm. it's yeah it's really scary in how even though when someone's like wrong morally or factually people still religiously follow and that's that's mm. incredibly dangerous mm. very that's almost like a cult sort of mentality that you know they obey they watch mm. and yeah and and that's when the beauty of philosophy comes in. That's like, you know, as I said before, you know, mm-hmm. sword and shield. Yep. And there is a good news um, that I, 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 I'd like to share you, uh, share to mm-hmm. you. Um, I've started a Hindi channel, one more channel, mm-hmm. one more channel in which I'll be teaching academic philosophy. So, oh, so okay. the thing is, I'm, I'm having this blackboard here. I'll, I'll just show you my blackboard, a uh, whiteboard. It's basically a whiteboard. So I, I've oh, been... Yeah? I've been teaching here, so it's general metaphysics, the last lecture which I gave, ontology, difference between ontology and metaphysics and all of that, all of that academic philosophy kind of stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so the thing is, uh, I this is what I was trying to tell you, that people need to know and embrace uh, the world of philosophy. Because that Mm. is how it not only gives you an academic or an intellectual edge over other people, but it also tries, you know, solving your problems. That's what I believe. You know, you Mm. become your own problem solver. You become the surgeon of your own mind. What's your take on that? I mean, I exactly agree, especially with all these dangers of people influencing other people mm. for negative aspects. When philosophy can teach you to be a critical thinker, Mm -hmm. enabling you to go, hold up. That ain't right. Mm. Stuff like instead of just embracing it willy nilly. Oh, it's just yeah. To constantly question is the beauty. Yeah. Uh, The what what was the last uh, you know the the last philosophical movie that you do you do are you into movies? Oh yeah, I'm into movies. Philosophical movies. Oh, which had a philosophical premise or background. 
Well, funny enough, me uh, and my friends were watching a horror movie called Sinister. Yeah, I have seen that. One. I have seen that. Yeah, that, that that's good. That's real. Especially that lawnmower scene. Like, yeah, I've oh, seen that. Oh, the... What a way to go. I was, enjoying, go. I was enjoying that scene. That guy was guy or girl was mowing the lawn and then you know, no, 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 fuck it. Yeah. A head pops out of the... <laughs> Shit. That was oh, good. Oh man, that got me. That but, was good. Kind of, as me as a philosopher, I could see the very sadness mm-hmm. of that in the philosophical aspects is the fact that mm. what was his name? Uh, Bagul, the god Bagul, mm. consumes these children into his realm. Mm. And it's the sad, the philosophical sadness that oh, existentialism. Yep. Is the fact that these children are going to actually cease to exist mm. because he's consuming the souls, and that's 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 the horror, major horror bit is the fact that they will cease to exist entirely. Mm. But also, I know this is very 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 strange, but I kind of feel sorry for Bagul as well. He has to constantly feed on souls in order for himself to survive. Yes. Mm. So that movie gave me a lot of existentialism, sort of philosophical interests and aspects, mm. is mm. the diminishing of the soul and the constant eating that he must do in order to survive. Yeah. Like he's basically doing it out of instinct. Mm. I mean, for all we know, he must really hate it mm. or not. I mean, it, the guy's pretty sadistic. Yeah, and okay. the and the children's soul, who uh, that uh, creature is, whatever it is, it's it's feeding on. That's a very prime example of what existentialism is actually is. Like people are present, mm. like the, that those children are present in that time, but still they are somewhere else. You know, their soul is mm. somewhere else. So that's what existential crisis is in a nutshell. You are physically present here, but you 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 think that your existence is to exist. Yeah, you can. It's a subtle, very subtle, very very minor uh, point from that movie, but uh, that's what existential crisis is. We think we are living this life at the same time, not living this life. You know, what's the meaning of this life? Mm. So yeah, yeah. So that's what the thing is. The 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 the, the last movie, uh, philosophical philosophical movie that I watched was Irrational Man, in which uh, we had that character Walking Phoenix. You should watch that. And okay. Walking yeah, Phoenix watch. and uh, Emma Stone, I believe. And that movie was uh, Walking Phoenix is an existential philosopher, and he tries huh? to kill a person uh, to you know come out of his existential crisis. You know he thinks that killing a person and doing justice to someone else because that person was a very wicked ma- pers- wicked judge or someone. So killing that judge who gives away you know uh, wrong judgments is rational for other people who are suffering because of him so if i kill that person i am making the lives of other people uh, you know happy so happy, that is what yeah. the premise of the movie is and one more movie movie you should be watching which is when nietzsche wept so that's a okay. very interesting movie when nietzsche wept it's on the life of frederick nietzsche and when he fell in love and before going into insanity so hmm. they didn't show the dark very much very the, the what happened after him moving to italy but it's still a very good movie you should be watching and the last movie which you should hmm. be watching is which i watched is her h e r her again walking phoenix and it's a very beautiful movie trying to show you the that's what we are discussing today social philosophy hmm. that movie is trying to p- preach social philosophy and uh, you walking phoenix falls in love with artificial intelligence an operating system mm. that's uh, in his mobile phone and he has fell in love with it so you guys who when this video gets uploaded you you guys should be watching these movies these movies are having very beautiful philosophical uh, premise and uh, any other movie you are having in your mind uh, matthew Ooh. any random any random well i have been thinking quite a lot about star wars Star Wars. Yeah, I saw your profile mm. pic of you holding that. I don't. I. I have yeah, never I been. Yeah, I lied back back when I was a little twelve. <laughs> I proudly support the Empire. However, mm. yeah, I hate the rebel scum. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting. Uh, it's more political philosophy. How the movie says mm. states that the Jedi 
are good. Mm -hmm. The rebellion is good. The empire mm -hmm. is evil. Okay. Now, if you don't really think about it, go, okay, yeah, 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 you know, empire does a lot. Of... But the rebellion has committed more atrocities than the empire ever has. I've never been into like Star Wars. So, up... what is the premise of Star Wars? Can you uh, throw some light on that? Ooh, basically, space wizards. Okay. Uh, up against an entire galactic empire. I guess that's basically it. Oh. Okay. It's very, very good. I highly recommend you watch it. But it's interesting mm. how well, that's in other movies too. You notice that uh, mm. a, a rebellion of some core of some sort is is good mm. against a authoritative government or something, and yet that authoritative government has order, resources, all that stuff. Because let's just say a rebellion takes that over, mm. order is gone. Mm. No one's here to protect you anymore. Mm. You no longer have resources. Mm. You no longer have healthcare. Mm. You no longer have all the basic needs because this other state has conquered mm. you. Yep. So they need to ask themselves philosophically in a political matter, is it worth it to have a rebellion take over for freedom? Mm. When in the end, they're probably just going to end up just like the author authoritative government. Okay, that's how I seem to view it in a lot of these things. Mm. Yeah, is that over time? Because funny enough, this will be written in my philosophy book, which I'm writing. Oh, great! Um, great. The inevitability of corruption. Mm. We very much hate that. You know, the corruption's so bad; it's horrible; it's evil. Mm. Yet it's inevitable. You can have the most prestigious, pious organization the world has ever seen. Mm. But in all reality, over the years, things will decay and eventually it turns to the most corrupt. Yeah, You can see that with almost every single organization. Mm. And they slowly mm. fade away. And yeah. that can also be said with governments as well, with the uh, American, the founding fathers, everything was quite good mm. when they took a, took everything away from the British and set their own laws and freedoms. Mm. Everything was doing rather well, well, before the Civil War, of course. Mm. And then, of course, over time, then we had the Civil War against the Union and the Confederacy, mm. and then on from there. So it's all about it's polit political philosophy, right? So what sort of uh, political philosophy you are looking at in this particularly? Any well, idea? in this book that I'm writing, it's pretty much covering all aspects of philosophy. I'll be writing all sorts of... Okay, I was focused on the political... Wonderful. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. A big part of it is political philosophy. How okay, I okay. noticed the inevitability of corruption mm. uh, is like the how it's impossible to not have a advanced society without a form of control mm. if you think about it even in the most basic political philosophy and ideology mm. a, a tribal system mm. you still need a tribal leader mm. people often really hate the whole leadership thing mm. you know it's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but it's it's inevitable. Yep. People don't really seem to accept that fact that it's impossible as we humans are a social creature, mm. not a solitary one. Yeah. Like it's in our genetics itself. Mm. Either lead or follow. Mm. You can't exactly have any form of society mm. without a leader or some form of control. Hmm. Do you think religion has been exploiting this fact that humans are social creatures and... Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. We cannot oh, live without yeah. leader. Yeah. Vatican City, I mean, if you look at the Vatican, uh, hmm. that's all those tithes and all those donations. Yeah. Most exploitations. But religion, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they that is what they the tap into. They know the primal thing. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is what they tap into. Mm. Right, this they know the primal fear of humans, and they know how to exploit it mm. for their own gain. Mm. And then they build these mega structures. They build 
all these things and suppress the people. I mean, mm. after the Roman Empire fell, we were in sort of the Dark Ages. Mm. That's when Christianity was a form of solid rule. It was, it was, it was the iron fist. Yep. If you weren't Christian, boom. Yep. Or stuff like that. It was, it's mm. quite interesting, but quite sad because in reality, we'll never ever truly recover. Because anyone who had an innovative idea, gone. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Well, it really shows just how powerful religion could be. Hmm. That's what happened I mean, to ancient Greek philosophers. What you are saying, you know, people mm. like Xenadoras, X A N A D O R A Xenadoras. I don't know. I don't remember his name, but he was expelled from uh, Greece. On the premise of he argument, he gave an argument that the sun which which we are worshiping is not is not a god; it's molten rock and lava. Mm. So stop worshiping it. And he was expelled, and he was said, "If you ever try ever try to come back, we'll execute you." Mm. And now we know as a fact that sun is made up of gas; it's no god, right? Yeah. That's very yeah, and that's what people mm. exploit, and that's what people exploit. Do you think? Do you think that? Um, why do you think that if religion, if religion is having such a uh, what religious people claim to be, for example, Christians, um, that those pure mm-hmm. conservative Catholic Christians, then these people who uh, preach Islam, all these people claim their religion to be the absolute truth. So why aren't governments following this absolute truth? For example, USA, the majority of the people in the United States are Christian, right? Mm. then the majority of the people many of the people in russia are muslims uh, uzbek i mean the ussr countries b- belonging in and out of ussr uzbekistan kazakhstan these all are muslim countries so why don't they yeah. adopt islamic you know what you, what, what what we call it why why don't they what, what's oh, your take on that we view religions and governance completely different if a religious take care of it, it's more of a meh but because most of the world is heavily democratic, if a aggressive government takeover would happen, mm. yeah, people will be up in arms. You know, whole unions will start creating militias and you know torches and pitchforks. Mm. Have at them, you know that sort of thing. Yeah. That's why with religion, it has to be more careful. Mm. Yeah, you know, more more spindly. You know, spinning the right web mm. to catch that fly. Yeah. Well, government, government, it's yeah, it's completely shift because yeah, we have completely different mentalities in mm. regards to religion and governance. Mm. Mm. Apologies, mm. Uh, the viewers watching. I'll be having a bite of this, so it will keep me energized throughout this podcast. So the thing is, um, some Cadbury choco bakes. I don't know. So mm. the thing is, um. Uh, with the book which i've been i've not i i wrote a couple of pages for that book three or four pages and and those pages got lost while i was shifting here so never mind we'll 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 write another some other pages so that th- so the thing is my book would be coming in three volumes right okay. so the first volume would be god never spoke which is the reality god never spoke whatever Mm. religions are it's something which we are speaking as i tell you i as i told you the other day you asked me about uh hedonism right hedonism if i'm pronouncing it right yeah is god a hedonist hedonism, hedonism. yeah hedonism so I, I i gave you one one argument which was that hu- humans make what humans try to mold god according to them right god is just a mm. reflection of human morality or whatever human ethics so the thing mm. is that book would be speaking on the first volume would be on uh, by the name god never spoke the next volume would be trying to explain the existential crisis of god now god mm. is facing an existential crisis and that book goes by the name that volume goes by the name um, god spoke question mark why because god is questioning questioning his ability its ability to that am i the real creator of this universe because mm. these people are acting like they have created the universe or they are the saviors of this universe whatever the, the the deal is so god has come into an existential crisis and he or it is 
you know questioning his existence and his powers mm. and that that yeah 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 so the, when i came up with that question i was just pondering on the idea mm. like being in the eyes of god and then let's just take a default god let's remove all religious staples it has from everything we've ever created just a default god that you created say an afterlife of some sort and the material plane of existence i reckon he must have been very bored if you're the only thing to exist nothing mm. else you create life to satisfy your entertainment wouldn't it i mean i'm pretty sure anyone would universally agree if you're bored you want to unbore yourself and well if you have if you have some really cool ooga booga stuff <laughs> you create life see yeah. how it goes hmm. i mean it's like how we have a uh, goldfish we like to see it move around do cool stuff or cats and dogs and all that we like to see them react we like to see them move around and be weird so and that's how i think that you know god god does exist i reckon he's a hedonist Mm there has been an argument i don't know what who gave that argument but that was a child it's like a child who got bored created this universe to have fun i don't mm. know who gave that argument but this is a very famous argument that a child who got bored created this universe to just have fun play around yeah he got bored so this is what the thing is and uh, the third volume of the book, book would be covering the premise that if god spoke that if god started speaking what would be the wrath what would be the aggression he would come up with will that be aggression will that be innocence will that be something he would be begging us to stop so this is going to be a quite interesting book for all you people yeah, i look forward to reading it interested in uh, philosophy so um, the thing is we got a question here by dhanashri mm-hmm. being uh, being realistic all the time does it make us less imaginative just random questions come to my mind being realistic actually makes things rather cool and you mm. kind of have to be imaginative to make the conclusion of realism you have to apply logic you have to think outside the box you have to think about all these things and line everything up in a perfect formula to determine the realism behind it right in a formula that's, just yeah you can you people can ask more questions guys you can go on with your questions uh, matthew is here to answer them all i'll try my best to answer if it's under my under my uh, scope so um pradyuman is here pradyuman black screen yeah we have resolved that issue so the thing is it's you know matthew this this uh, 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 this week has been very interesting for me because now yeah. i am able to sit my ass down you know give my time in for philosophy lectures which i ran away from and ran away from reading stuff which i told you in our first meeting when we met um so mm. now because i have uh, i have put this uh, barrier on to me that i have to make a video today so for example when we end this um podcast or this live stream i would go and study epistemology so the today's today's video would be on epistemology so i'm going through the mm. introduction of philosophy so uh, the the first video was on what philosophy is divided into uh, metaphysics epistemology value theory um and now i'm covering each topic so i have mm. been uh, covering three or four and i have gotten to know many things like for example stoicism nihilism existentialism the existentialism they are ph- many philosophers don't consider them to be philosophy why because they say that this is this is not analytical philosophy these you can take this to be a part of literature stoicism existentialism or you, you many people cons- many philosophers consider frederick nietzsche marcus aurelius not as philosophers but as a uh, poets or writers so this was a very interesting fact that i came across on from a lecture it was in hmm. uh, it was an oxford lecture i don't i believe but which was very weird for me i mean st- yeah that is weird because that just means that 
excellent at saying their philosophies. Hmm. Like as they, they give the golden nuggets, not the shit. Mm. So it's a bit weird to disregard them as philosophy when they're preaching, when they're saying the philosophy. Mm. So I wonder in their mind, what to them defines a philosopher? Mm. Maybe to them is some old fart with a loincloth <laughs> standing on top of a stog. Hey, hey, it is on this day that we... <laughs> Proclaim this philosophy! <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> Not someone who's very different, like, <clears throat> I am here to give a speech on philosophy. Mm. That, he is not an old fellow with loincloth. Not a philosopher. Mm. I notice people like Oxford and Cambridge, they have very weird, weird views on philosophy itself. Mm. These people are have only confined themselves to arguments which contain ontology or, you know, uh, which exist in reality. So they think that philosophy is something which should be um, a thing in your reality, not beyond mm. your reality. If you are going to metaphysics, which is beyond your reality, then you should be giving posited arguments, not something which is very vague. Like, for example, Frederick Nietzsche saying God is dead. They consider mm. it to be very vague because they say that it's full of fallacies. I don't know why. But there might be fallacies. Every perfect things, every perfect thing has a crack to be exploited. That's what I believe. So, oh yeah. So you can't claim that it's not a philosophy. So Dhanashri is saying uh, these are the part of English literature. Yeah. So a couple of people yeah. in my community are from this English literature background, uh, doing their bachelors in English literature, bachelors in English whatever it is i don't know so the thing is they have they are being taught uh, so the weird thing is mm -hmm. frederick nietzsche people like frederick nietzsche right um, albert kamu has been taught to people people like frederick nietzsche kk guard are not taught in philosophy academic institution or philosophy institution mm -hmm. they are taught to english you know people who are graduating with english literature i don't know why I don't know why either. Never really took Nietzsche as a as a bunch of a poet. Mm. Though he did use a lot of rather big words. Yeah. So I'd imagine they would give his material mm. to people learning English so they can comprehend the really long, the very big, the very uh, prestigious words. Mm. That sort of thing. Mm. I guess that's how they did it stuff like that mm. yeah. so this is a very fucked up thing that i got to know that if you are not mm. coming from an analytical philosophy background you know uh, you are not backing your stuff with empirical shit then you are not a philosopher yeah for us f person who is thinking freely who is able to think beyond the reality or beyond the rules set by this world is a philosopher or you know trying to break hmm. those shackles is a philosopher so that's exactly right so people saying these shit that this this is who a philosopher if you are trying to contain someone into what philosophy this is a philosopher this is not a philosopher then you are you know putting a barrier into philosophy and that's that's not philosophy my friend yeah, that's not philosophy. That's yeah. that's you putting a stop on their dream. So yeah. yeah, so the thing is, again coming back to the channel. So the thing is, um, what I've been thinking is, and I'll be consulting with you on this. So I've been. This is a very untapped potential back here in India, right? But we are having mm -hmm. this exam, which is um, UPSC, right? Um, so this UPSC, this is a civil civil services exam. So in India, it is considered to be an honor to be an Indian administrative in in Indian administrative service, an IS officer who is regarded to be the mm -hmm. epitome of those government central government jobs and all those shit. So it is a very um, you know rigorous competition. So around like I don't know around 10, 10, la uh, 10, 1 million students sit in for the exam, out of which only one thousand get selected. 
so mm. uh, you have to select a subject in which you need to do your special speci- specialization you need to give your papers so there's there is psychology there is sociology um, physics chemistry philosophy so this world of philosophy mm. this is growing why because philosophy is having a very short sub- short uh, syllabus so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to tap into this market you know and ca- try to capitalize this and grow this mm. into a team uh, for the time being i am teaching so uh, then i like to grow my team you know and oh, reel in my coach be a part of this team hmm yeah we, <laughs> yeah for sure for sure we can so teaching students academic philosophy in this way i am also learning like this is this was some a new knowledge that i learned who a philosopher is and who is not a philosopher so this this was something interesting for me yep well it says aristotle once said Mm. Philosophy is a journey with no end. Mm. What he means by that, you know, we're all the teachers we could have been learning all our lives, but we're still always and forever will be students. We're mm. always absorbing that knowledge, always figuring things out. Hence, you know, it's, it's a never-ending journey. Mm, it's a never-ending journey. I was yesterday. I was getting bored, so I watched this movie, uh, Gladiator. so i yeah good stuff yeah i have heard its name uh, so i watched the movie gladiator and the the one thing which touched me was uh, the concept of afterlife in that movie and which was mm. which was a very important you know important the protagonist was always uh, you know in, in that world of afterlife that because his uh, ch- child and his wife were killed so he was like yeah. imagining stuff that he's going through these farms and his child is waiting his wife is calling him and mm. because i was able to relate this with my father that if there might be something because we don't know for sure if there might be some because movies give you this realistic feeling of you know enjoying that moment right that this exists mm. so i was imagining myself to be a fucking roman general so the thing is <laughs> it 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 warps your reality so this thing that me imagining that if I, after me dying i am going through this gate and in my in the afterlife there is a beautiful home and there is a lake in front and my father is sitting alone and he is waiting for all of us i mean my mother me my sister and he's because my father like to read newspapers so he is there sitting with his newspaper you know sipping a cup of tea and he said oh you have arrived i was waiting for you so this was something this was something which touched me i mean i know that no shit happens after we die it's a very you know childish fantasy but um, it was quite interesting so i liked the movie i enjoyed the movie gladiator hmm. so that was you, have you seen the movie oh, I, yeah. from Loved your it. from See, your reaction you have seen the roman it. empire yeah, roman okay. empire has always been my thing hmm. oh i love this especially oh, marcus aurelius because... we are having marcus aurelius in that movie Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marcus yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one bad thing he ever did was giving the damn emperorship to Commodus. Commodus. What the fuck, man? Mm, no, Maximus. He gave it to Maximus because of which Commodus tried to uh, kill Marcus Aurelius. Yeah, but he gave the essentially the crown to Commodus, his son. Is that so? It, yeah. Okay, but because in the movie, that's the one bad thing Marcus really did. No, no, in the movie, when Joaquin Phoenix came into, uh, you know, asking his father Marcus Aurelius, he said that I'll not give this emperorship to you. I'll be giving it to Maximus, uh, the Roman general, and mm. he then killed Marcus Aurelius because he said you don't love me and all this shit, and he killed him. That was the movie. I don't know if the real story is something different, but. <laughs> In the movie, he gave the he gave the emperorship to Maximus because of which Commodus kills kills uh, Marcus Aurelius and Maximus wants to take the revenge for Marcus Aurelius, his wife and his child. Yeah. How long how long ago you watched the movie? Oh, years ago. But I definitely remember the history because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the history. Ma- I'm telling you because I was I saw that in the movie, so I don't oh, know yeah. about the history. Because uh, when Marcus Aurelius died, mm. that ended the Pax Romana, which okay. is called the uh, Hundreds of Years of Peace. Mm-hmm. And then Marcus Aurelius' son Commodus took over and became emperor. Okay. 
That's when the Roman Empire went to shit. <laughs> or oh. starting to. Okay. He made the empire bankrupt. Mm. He did all he did a lot of bad shit. Mm. A lot of bad shit. And you'd think such a wise man like Marcus Aurelius would think, ah, oh, yeah, no. You're not getting the Emperorship. No, 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 no. Mm. But I guess his fatherly love overtook his logic. Oh. That sort of thing. I don't think he really thought, or maybe he did. Mm. Or maybe he just didn't care because, you know, once you're dead, you're dead. Who cares? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's mm. a bit of a stoic sort of view on it you know, he is stoic himself. Mm-hmm. And most of us believe when you're there, you're dead. Don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That sort of thing. So maybe that was his mentality. But yeah, the Roman Empire was starting to decline when Commodus mm-hmm. became emperor. Mm-hmm. And yeah, mm-hmm. all bad shit happened. Yeah. And and the, in the movie, I got to know this, that the, the signs that we show, this all the best and fuck you. All the best and fuck you. So... Yeah. Oh. Because there was such an investment. You have to invest a lot of money, time, and resources for your gladiator. Mm. So it, it was considered a great loss if the gladiator died. Mm. Hence why they'll usually go for non-lethal cuts and stabs. Because, yeah, each gladiator is an investment. Oh, That's why, it, I know, right? In most mm. films, in gladiators, mm. not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. They're dead. Suck shit. But no, in reality, <laughs> gladiators never really often died because, yeah, it's a bad thing for a gladiator to die. That's a lot of money gone. Okay. Hmm. So it was yeah, like an investment. Oh, I because oh, in yeah. yeah, because in movies you tend to exaggerate things. Oh you yeah. Know? So I didn't know that I was like you take a fucking sword and gut people live. Uh, so that is yeah. that that was the movie but i enjoyed the those uh, gore and violent violence graphic scenes that is the oh, yeah. uh, that is something very enjoyable for me um so um the thing is so we are covering people who are in with us we are covering social philosophy this is what social philosophy all, is all about and one more thing which i would like to ask you what's your take on the Egyptian civilization, the construction of Egypt. Do you think some aliens came into came into our world and made that? What's your take on that? Uh, uh that's what I think on it. It mm-hmm. was a lot of slaves, and the Egyptian had massive mathematical knowledge of trial and error. Mm. I remember the first pyramid, pyramid which is in Saqqara. Um, the Saqqara pyramid was rather tiny, mm. but it was almost like, you know, how the ancient Aztecs, how they had those square, like, pyramids? Uh, it was steps, sort of like in kind that of steps. respect. Yeah, steps. It was kind of like that. But in and each and every pyramid they've ever built mm. was getting better and better and better and better. Yeah. And then you eventually get, you know, the, pyramid, the gigantic pyramids of Giza. Mm. You know, gigantic behemoths, mm. you know, the sign of the pharaoh's power mm-hmm. sort of thing. Mm. But it was, yeah, a lot of slaves. The Egyptians had access to, especially in their area, in that particular area, ancient Egypt was like, you know, there was a superpower in that area. That was until the Romans came around, turned mm. Egypt into its food bowl. Mm. But in that area, Egypt had a lot of power and sway over Everywhere. I mean, they control the they control the Nile. You control the Nile. You control Africa. So they had access to a lot of manpower, and with a lot of manpower, you can do and perform the unimaginable. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So it definitely wasn't aliens. And why would aliens want to do that in the first place? Hmm. Like, if you're an alien, wouldn't you want just no interference to see how the species go. Mm. That would interfere with scientific data. Mm. Not, yeah, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me why people would actually think mm. aliens built or helped build the pyramids. It just made no sense to me. Mm. I remember in the History Channel, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but there's a thing called the History Channel. Mm-hmm. Ancient aliens. A lot of yeah, ancient aliens. Oh, I used to cringe the shit out of that. Like, <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> me and my friends <laughs> would time ourselves, see how long until we cringed out, and go, oh, the aliens <laughs> built it. Oh, the Sasquatch has helped them build it. What? We have seen oh, that. I would prefer uh, Man vs. Uh, Wild uh, uh, better than that. Bear Grylls. Man vs. <laughs> Wild better than watching Ancient Aliens. But yeah, I, I, by being a child, I really enjoyed the fact that, uh, you know, Yetis exist in the Himalayas. <laughs> that was something yeah. very interesting for me. And because <laughs> we are having this uh, in our curriculum, uh, since I'm studying architecture, so we had this debate and we, we um, wasted two hours of our life in our lecture debating on mm-hmm. how the pyramids were made because nobody knows the real answer and the pyramids were very be- that is true yeah pyramids were very beautiful uh, uh, what was structures you know at that mm-hmm. that point of time it was covered with limestone which was all white and at the top it was made up of gold so the thing mm-hmm. was thing was we were talking about how it could have been made many were saying it was uh, made using uh, the hydraulic lift and but then <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I heard about that. They also used uh, ramps. Yep, ramps, well. very big ramps. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were taught that They're calculation that, that how big of a ramp you would uh, have to build, you know, to roll stones over this. And someone were using, you know, this a chessboard method which they were using that they used to build up. There is a video. I would share the video to you on Facebook and in the yeah. chat if I find that guy is using small blocks of wood. And trying to demonstrate how you know those pyramids were built at that point of time, which was quite interesting. Mm. So at the end, he just said that whatever it is, it is a very you know it the construction is something beyond the time at that that point mm. of time, and and it's still very difficult to construct something that big and that oh, massive yeah. in in today's era. But at the end, he just said no shitty alien came and you know. Yeah. Ye, nah. Why would an alien care to put fucking rocks everywhere and you know, build a pyramid? And exactly. You know what these people do is they, they these people show coordinates for these uh, thing that this pyramid is built on. Let me tell you. Let me show you that. Let me. Uh, uh is oh, the whole means. star coordinates thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I heard that. It's so bullshit. Pyram- because the yeah. stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're constantly moving. Cause, you know, space is infinite and stars are constantly moving and drifting apart uh, so that's a bit of a waste of materials if they're doing like a chart uh-huh. it's just oh yeah so no, this is this makes is, no sense this is it um this this meme is saying speed of light is two uh two nine nine seven nine two four five eight Coordinates of the Great Pyramid of Giza: twenty nine point nine seven nine two four five eight. Coincidence? Question mark. Can someone explain me? They are saying that the speed of light is same as the coordinates of Pyramid of Giza. What the fuck? Oh, oh. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. Go on traveling the speed of light. You're so fucked if you're traveling the speed of light, and any any material could be like. Like a little asteroid size of my bloody hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that goes the entire spacecraft. Mm. It, yeah, no, it's it, like, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? Oh, god, the thing that people actually think that shit. It's like, <laughs> if people people can come up come up with cults that the Earth is still flat, the flat Earth theory. So, what's your take on that, people who are saying Sorry, what? flat Earth theory that the oh, Earth flat is flat? Earth theory. Yeah. Well, see, that's a it's an interesting thing because the ancient Greeks already proposed the idea that the Earth was a sphere. Okay. So did the ancient Egypts, and so did many other ancient civilizations. Mm. It wasn't ironically until Christianity took over mm. and made its theocratical government. Mm. All that, you know, it's a term that the Earth is flat. Mm. Any other idea of that? It's interesting and like, yeah. In a way, I guess, if they had no, the Christians generally kept a lot of information secret in the Vatican archives, mm. which I would kill to access. Mm. I'd love to go in there. Just mm. like, oh, all that knowledge. But, um, 
I guess in the eyes of a peasant, right? So you go to church mm. and they proclaim that the earth is flat. Now, if you travel to the beach, it looks flat, even mm. though in reality it's not, but it looks perfectly flat. And, you know, that's probably the guy. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense in their perspective. Even though, yeah, in many ancient civilizations have already said that the earth is a sphere. Hmm. The famous mathematician Pythagoras, he was on the first made the idea that, yeah, the earth is is a sphere. Hmm. And many other, even pretty sure even the Aztecs even proposed that idea as well. Mm. I'm pretty sure they use uh, the movement of the sun and moon. I'm pretty sure. Don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Or something. I remember it was something to do with the sky that they determined. Looks the way it moves. Mm. I'm fairly certain. That's how they figured uh, that out. I don't have any idea for this. I haven't been into uh, this. Me neither. I think I, I used to remember. I forgot now. Mm. But yeah, they, many ancient civilizations are already proof. And it's a bit weird how in today's advanced civilization that there's people out there who actually believe that the Earth is flat, even though we have like literal video evidence. Like, mm. Yeah, mm. weird. But... <laughs> yeah, they're cults having all this bullshit, Illuminati. Uh, What's your take on that? <laughs> Illuminati. Illuminati. Now, I know a little bit of the history. Mm-hmm. So they started back in the dark ages of medieval history. Mm. So they are people, scientists, poets, writers, all that, that did not believe in Christianity mm. uh, and formed this order called the Illuminati. It was just to basically converse with each other uh, underneath the Christian sects. Okay. How they're allowed to talk about their freedoms and stuff. Mm. Converse. Mm. But nowadays it's more associated with the rich and wealthy elite controlling the earth. Mm. In a logical sort of mindset, having an organization controlling the planet, mm. I guess wouldn't be so far-fetched. Mm. But then again, it would also make no sense to me as well because, you know, they'll constantly be at each other's throats all the time, mm. you know? I want mm-hmm. your land. Give it to me. No. Mm-hmm. Bang. Mm-hmm. Start a war. That mm-hmm. sort of thing. But mm, I guess yes and no. I think it'd be a lot more like, you know, frat boys and fraternities, mm. you know, making their weird rituals and cults and stuff just for the sake of mates you know mm. doing fun shit you know mm. like uh like the order of the buffalo i heard that's a thing that's a fraternity group very you know secretive bunch but it's just a, fr- a fraternity group you know mm. just old mates coming in <laughs> having some really cool ass rituals you know smack probably spanking each other the the Butts with some sort of plank, <laughs> you know, you're in that sort of thing, you know, cool, cool and fun stuff like that. Yeah, it, it, that's what mainly these groups are. Mm. Just, you just, they, they just uh, happen to be incredibly well wealthy. Oh, because these, as far as I remember, as far as I know, I don't have much knowledge about this but people were like these groups these sects came into being after the french revolution and during the french revolution because they were not allowed yeah. to have you know a public gathering so they they were like under underground human beings not under living underground but you know they used to have some secret meetings and all that shit and they started taking control Napole- napoleon if correct me if i'm wrong the chat please correct me if i'm wrong um, Napoleon was part of the Ill- Illuminati sect, and Illuminati is c- considered Napoleon to be the to be the ruler for France. And the second thing is coming this coming to our twenty first century. Recently, uh, the l- last year, I was seeing this podcast. 
so in this podcast there were three people three th- these are three intellectual youtubers from india so they were talking about some afghani man afghanistan or not afghanistan sorry my my bad afghanistan or iraqi iranian some general and he said that um, there are many things which humans cannot know and what governments are hiding from you the government is being controlled by extraterrestrials and he was like that is why i left this fucking my job and this is what it is and a couple of people were saying that this is true this might be true mm. why is a general war general is not war general an army general saying like that so many were like if it had been true there would be panic in the whole world either the government is exactly right yeah yeah either the governments are very good at you know uh, covering all things up like for example the area 51 which is considered mm. to be having all sort of extraterrestrial equipments and alien bodies and lab- laboratories in which aliens were fucking gutted barbecues in which aliens <laughs> tasting of alien meat is going on but the reality yeah. is many Uh, us officials say that it is just a testing site for our latest technology or the upcoming technology which yeah. every government has which every wo- country yeah. has yeah so it's yeah if someone was telling all these secrets hmm. they wouldn't be alive to tell anyway they'd be huh silenced right is- immediately so it's a bit You can tell that I would say that they're fake. Hmm. The simple fact that if they really did know the secrets, they most certainly wouldn't be alive to tell them. Hmm. That's for sure. That's and if for they sure. would, hmm. it, it it would be so rushed and panicked, it would almost be illegible. I would imagine. Yeah, that's for sure. And more so, the government would just I'm afraid, like if it was a big big secret, the government probably would not be afraid to shut things down almost immediately mm-hmm. upon discovery. Mm-hmm. And It's weird coming from me, but I very much agree with the government in if there are, uh, which I'm assuming there are a mm. lot of secrets. Yeah. And this is weird coming from me, a philosopher. And I can't even really say this out of my mouth. <laughs> but sometimes ignorance is bliss in this respect, because if there if there's something that you know there's horrible, absolutely horrible secret, and if known out to the world. Everyone's gonna have such a shitty, mm. horrible existence. Mm. Or you tell them a lie, mm. and everyone lives happily. Logically, we can we can deduct that most people would probably go for the lie. Mm. Uh, what do people say again? A white lie, and mm. you know, for the benefit of most people. So I yeah I very much uh, I don't like these people like oh, must be the secret must be the secrets but are they ready? Mm. Yeah, it's like Pandora's box. You ever heard of that one, Pandora's box? No. Long story short, this uh, Zeus, the god Zeus, and the Greek god Zeus gave Pandora this box, mm. and the cheeky little devil said, "Don't open this box." So Pandora's like, oh, you know, it's a, and it, this is beautiful, ornate golden box. He's like, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> I want to open it, but uh, guy up there told me not to open it. Uh-huh. Fuck it, I'll open it. <laughs> open it, unleashed all manner, like every single evil of the world, mm. lust, oh. greed, all that, mm. all that, everything bad, and evil happened mm. came from Pandora's box, and everything whooshed out. Mm. And Zeus like shouldn't have opened the box. Mm. You should have told me that what this shit contains. And, yeah, well. Yeah. Great gods are rather weird lot, mm. but yeah, that's basically it. Long story short, that's very, very, very short. That is the premise of, of Christianity and Islam, right? Uh, you said Adam <laughs> and Eve not to eat the apple from this tree, but the devil uh, persuaded them to eat the apple from this tree as they will become immortal. And so yeah. they ate it, and so they were thrown to earth and all those shit, all those shit. And the Muslims are like, humans used to get food from. heaven right they used to get food mm. prepared in heaven so if if adam and eve would not have eaten that apple at that point of time we'd still be getting food from heaven what the fuck and that's what Even it is heaven eh? mm. trying to make me hungry 
कुलदीप कुलदीप हैज ज्वाइन इन हेलो फॉर फन हेलो मैथ्यू भैया आ गया ओके सो आई विल ट्रांसलेट दिस फॉर यू हेलो मैथ्यू भैया मीन्स बिग ब्रदर बिग ब्रदर यू वी कॉल बिग ब्रदर इन इंडिया भैया आ गया आई हैव कम सो फॉर फन वेलकम एंड यू यू पीपल कैन आस्क इन योर क्वेश्चन इफ यू आर हैविंग एनी एंड द थिंग इज वॉट 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 वॉज आई वॉन्टिंग वॉन्टिंग टू डिस्कस um i forgot my memory has <laughs> i forgot so you people can ask in your questions um and i have uh, put in the link for matthew's facebook down in the description box so you can go and ask any doubts any questions that you are having right so you yeah, have you heard of so this just struck me yeah 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 go on go on go on speaking of movies mm-hmm. if you ever watch something really philosophical mm-hmm. Warning it is depressing as hell. Mm. 1984. Okay. You okay. know the whole concept of Big Brother's watching? No. Sort of thing? No, no. No? No. Uh so basically in this novel it's sort of like a political warning. Okay. That of a totalitarian like a full-on totalitarian government controlling everything and Big Brother, you know, watching through the screens forever mm. watching you wherever you go mm. whatever you do whatever you say and mm. thought police would come in and confiscate you or kill you and that sort of thing mm-hmm. highly philosophical oh. depressing as shit mm. but but god oh, it's good 1984 1984 very very famous novel by Orson uh, Orson Welles mm. was it George Orwell mm. George Orwell I think No, Oswald. Shit. Mm. It's either one of them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, very good stuff. We have gotten a question here. Pradyuman is asking, mm. "Are you doing your masters in philosophy, Matthew?" I reckon he didn't tell about his undergrad, so that's a guess from your side. Masters in philosophy? No. Nah. Pradyuman? No. No. Nah. No formal degree. Don't need one. Yeah, don't be. We... All you need is read books. Observe society as the way it is. That's all you need. Don't yeah. need to spend no big money on philosophy and degrees. Mm. Because degrees I tell must... you how you can become a philosophical prisoner. Yeah. Yeah. I just laugh at people who just spend thousands upon thousands yep. upon thousands of dollars mm. just for this degree. Okay, I. understand if it was the history mm. of philosophy makes total sense to me that's fine but actually learning the philosophy itself and applying it mm. don't need that most mm. philosophers would just spit at you for just doing that like idiot like mm. uh like for me like i just purchased a rather expensive book on its way the complete oh. works of plato okay I was doing a degree. Mm. That would cover the cost, but like, mm. yeah, I mean, like eighty-one bucks versus like forty-five thousand, mm-hmm. <laughs> and have fun trying to pay those debts off. Mm. So, I mean, to me, it just seems logical to yeah. not do a degree and just get books. You can start just observing. you can start fucking, asking questions. You can go and sit down at a park every day, and that's. education for you yeah. right there you can observe yeah, exactly. and observe people behaving social behavior animal behavior yeah whatever and watching is. podcasts like this one you know yeah watching and that sort of thing yeah yeah so uh, uh matthew a couple of things that i would like like to ask you for like an advice for a guy like me who cannot read what would be your advice how to approach reading like for me i cannot sit my ass down whenever i take up a book beat the most fucking interesting book in this whole universe i cannot read it i yeah. feel i start feeling sleepy so what's your you know take how can you oh that's a toughy that one um i reckon just read a page a day i reckon okay. hmm. it doesn't have to uh that's what i sort of do because mm. philosophy books or any kind of book can be really daunting and dense it is just so much blocks of information that you yeah. have to interpret and read so i'd probably just yeah just one page one, one page, page every day listen to yeah mm. listen to cool ass music and just mm. read one page a day and then 
think on it, ponder on it. All right, next page. I mean, the book's not going anywhere. Hmm. It's no rush. What's my problem is uh, nowadays, whenever I try to read something, what I do is, or whenever I try to watch lectures, so that's why I put in a barrier. I have to make a video every day, so I have to watch that whole lecture. So what was happening with me was, as I was reading something, I read one line and something came up in my mind. Like I could improve this line or I could improve this specific philosophical con- context. So I hmm. take out my notepad and everything and just start scribbling down my 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 own shit. And hmm. then what I what this this subcon this thing subconsciously subconsciously creeps into my mind, which is that if I read too much of these books, right, this specific book, then I would not be able to write my book because it will hinder hmm. uh, hinder my capability of thinking myself so i don't know how to overcome that it is a very difficult thing which i'm facing it's kind of an existential crisis for me <laughs> not able to read books i always, always consider myself lucky i could read like hours and hours and hours just on end okay i generally like to keep a little notebook with me so i can jot down like a chapter hmm. what did i learn hmm. how can i use it Mm. What can I do? Mm. That sort of thing. Mm. More factual books. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. I I I do have some friends who have like that sort of thing too. It's like they really don't like reading. So mm. I just tell them, yeah, just one page a day. One page a day. Yeah, okay. one page a day. That's it. I I, I nice, follow that. Nice and chill. Okay, I'll try to do that. I'll try to do that. And yeah. then that's. And crisis too, a crisis too for me. I'm like, if I just read one page a day, then it would take like one year for me to complete this whole book. That's another. But if your advice is quite right, why? Because if I try to read one page a day, and if I read twenty days or twenty five days in a stre- at a stretch, then I, God knows, not God. What what the fuck am I saying? Then um, who knows? I would be able to, you know. Um, complete that book in the 30th day you know if i hmm. uh, gain that interest in that book hmm. so that's what the like thing if is if you're feeling if you feel like really confident too mm. you upgrade to two pages a day yep yep and I tried eventually you know like three then four and then five and then yeah yeah go I, from there yeah Little- steps yeah i try doing i'll try doing that and my one of my biggest problem is which i realize now is whenever i take notes what i do is i t- try to take notes like this on on a sheet of on 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 a on, on an a4 page so this mm. shit i i had a compilation of these many notes and all of those fucking i don't know lost got lost whilst we were mm. you know shifting a house so it's a setback for me you know so mm. now i'll be journaling or not journaling i'll be writing everything down in a notebook uh, so that it it could be preserved Okay, so we have got a couple of questions All right. from uh, Pradyuman, Pradyuman Solanki. He is asking how to overcome intellectual biases. Not to overcome intellectual biases. As in someone attacking you with bias yeah. or... Well, I'm afraid there's not really much you can do if mm. they're just going to be sticking mm. to that. It's just generally best to just leave mm. it's not worth the time or energy or effort mm. to just have some guy no mm. no <laughs> no you're wrong mm. no mm. yeah that sort of thing i've been in many situations with those myself and i could tell you it just it just destroys my brain just like nah fuck it i'm out <laughs> There's absolutely no nothing wrong with walking out. Mm. It, it, you're fighting a battle that the enemy's already lost, and they're just yeah, yeah, being a little baby about it. Mm. Mm. But as to researching, mm. because I've often encountered some of those too of intellectual biases as well. Mm. Um, it's generally best if you research different people, like people writing different articles. On the same subject mm. that way and then you can interlink mm. the articles together and get the universal concept mm. so basically find different writers and whatever they say about the same thing mm. is generally more more or less true okay 
instead of just reading from that one person. Okay. I've definitely noticed that it helps me quite a bit. Okay. Hmm. So you uh like there is a topic of discussion and yeah, a couple of writers are giving their point of views and you try to cover all of them so that you can have a link between what they're trying to speak yeah. and come up with a conclusion yeah. or an or a premise. Because we need to face the fact that we all are we're all biased. That's just human nature. Yeah. We hold our knowledge valuable and tight, and we could say we're very loose for reality. But I mean, mm. I mean, me as a stoic, I'm biased. I love my stoicism. I think yeah. that's the best thing ever. And mm. Like, mm. yeah, no, no, it's the best thing ever. Shut up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> hey, we're just all naturally biased. It's there's nothing wrong with that. So as long as you're not being toxic, yep. biased. Mm. It's just like shutting yourself off. Mm. That that's a bit toxic, bias. You mm. know, don't go there. Yeah, that that shit bad. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how that's how I like to think about that. Mm. Intellectual biases, in the sense, if Pradyuman, you want to elaborate your question, you would. But biases, as Matthew told, you cannot eliminate bias from your life or from your core because if you are a male, you are wearing uh, a gentleman's clothing. You are not wearing mm. a woman's clothes, so that is a bias in itself. Wear a fucking skirt yeah. and a lingerie and walk onto the roads of Delhi. You would know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, that reminds me. Roman Empire. It's still strange to think that the most successful empire mm. conquered the world in skirts and socks and sandals. Uh, uh, I saw that in the movie. <laughs> yeah, because uh. yeah, they wear the tunic, and you know, and they wear socks and sandals. In the movie yeah, Gladiator, just... in the movie Gladiator, in the last scene where they were picking up uh, the dead body of Maximus, there was this guy came in. He was he was wearing this skirt, and I thought that what what a beautiful ass this lady is having. And then I saw this was a man. <laughs> this was a man, and and he and he had beautiful legs. I'm sorry, people. <laughs> he had beautiful legs, oh. and, and that was a, that was a fucking illusion. So, oh, so the shit. thing is, <laughs> Kuldeep is asking a question, Matthew. How, how do you deal with insecurities and overthinking? Insecurities and overthinking. So, if someone were to challenge me, it's probably best to just shut that out. Insecurities, because you just have to think. Okay, is it logical? Hmm. Am I thinking logic here? Mm. Am I thinking emotionally? If I'm thinking emotionally, dial it down. Because mm. even I, everyone, it's just like bias. Everyone has their own insecurities. Mm. It's like with me and peanut butter sandwiches. I love my peanut butter sandwiches. And someone uh, says they add jelly or jam to the peanut butter sandwiches. I'm like, fuck them, what? Mm. No, you're not. Mm. Peanut butter remains peanut butter. Mm. You know, mm. but uh, insecurity because that, that's always a very it all depends on the person, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. On how they how they overcome it with me, it's just like how I said in the other podcast, you know, mm. calm logic, calm logic, mm. and just have that fluctuate over your head. Mm. Or others would deal with it and just like stop enough. Mm. I'm out, or they get more violent and more angry. You know, it's mm. like it's a insecurity is is where you you've hit a a soft spot, mm. is it in their personalities? And you know, it's just like it's the equivalent of being stabbed. Mm. It hurts with mm. insecurity, and you got to deal with that pain. And people deal with that pain differently. Mm. So my advice would. Just remember, if you're too emotional, dial it down, back off. Right. Because if you're violent and you're more emotional, you're going to slip, make mistakes. Mm. And I always teach this to my friends and other colleagues who are interested in debating. As soon as you Mm. turn emotional, that's it. Your opponent's got you. Mm. And you're going to slip. I Mm. guarantee it. Mm. That's why you always have to play logic. Mm. Think so. 
Mm. Is it logical? Mm -hmm. Am I being emotional? Mm. If so, all right. Mm. I calm myself down. It could be anything. It could be like puppies and kittens or, I don't know, doing whatever you feel. Imagining yourself as calm. Because mm. mm. the human brain is a very powerful thing. It is immensely powerful. It reminds me of a thing I was reading, the Himalayan monks. Right? It is fucking freezing over there, I'd imagine. Mm. And these monks are in their classic monk robes, meditating outside mm. where there could be a, a, a blizzard. Mm. And then they're fine. They're perfectly mm. fine. Yeah. Because, and they said to combat that, they just imagine heat. Mm. And the body reacts to that. Mm. And that's the beauty of the brain. Yeah. Controlling and having immense will over it, you're mm. able to conquer so many things. Mm. Mm. So the Shaolin monks, mm. the Himalayan monks, mm. they just think of warm and then they're good. Same thing with insecurities. Mm. You think of calm, therefore you are calm. So I have experienced this uh, sense of meditation when I used to meditate a couple of years ago and when I was at the peak of epitome of my meditation journey. So when I used to meditate, uh, the, the temperature here used to be in winters around 1 degree, 2 degree Celsius, which is just above the freezing point, a couple of degrees above the Oof. freezing point. And uh, you're fucking cold. Uh, your balls have shrunken. Yeah. So the thing is, <laughs> if you imagine like, I have to meditate because this is important for me. Not paying too much of a heat to meditation, but I need to meditate. But it is very cold and which might distract me from meditation. After like a couple of minutes, I used to feel this warm itchiness inside of my whole body. And mm. you wouldn't believe me. Um, after like five or six minutes, my whole body got warm. My hands, mm. my feet, they used to get warm. And yeah. like when I started doing, when I started practicing meditation, Five minutes seemed to be like 50 minutes or one hour. It, mm. it was very difficult. But after I came, I, I came into that groove of meditation, 20 minutes for like one minute or two minutes. The mm. relativity between time, you just tend to this, you know, forget that. And it becomes very, uh, it is a very beautiful thing. But it's, but it's, it comes with its own drawbacks when you, yeah, um, yeah. Cause, uh, Cause, I also meditate quite often. Yeah. Back when I was first starting, so I used I use meditation for philosophical thought. Oh, okay. I used to hone in on a thought and express on it. I always notice that my head always seems to hurt quite a bit when I meditate. It's just like, yeah, it's just it hurts. Yeah. Don't know why. I can never. I, I try googling. Nothing ever. Really it's it's up, a sign of Kundalini something. awakening, according to. Uh, the top med meditationers it's a sign of that mm. this there is this they are like this energy which is there which is the first sign of awakening this is the first awakening stage so there is this mm. uh, according to the mythology there is this uh, energy the, the, the energy in the form of a snake inside of your spine down okay. here at your spine which is just resting and when your kundalini awakens, it just, you know, it's an energy burst, burst of ecstasy, happiness, perennial ecstasy kind of shit. You know, you start seeing delusions mm -hmm. and all that enlightenment in a nutshell, in yeah. awakening. Right. So that the, 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 the third eye that you see, so they are like this mm -hmm. energy awakens and a couple of days before you, you feel uh, immense pain in your head in uh, the hmm. middle of your head so this is one theory because i googled it i was going through that phase of you know having this uh, pain immense pain here i don't know what that shit was but after that i left doing meditation and i was like i don't need to push it and then i saw this video of an of a himalayan monk who meditates in in a cave there is this shrine in the himalaya somewhere deep down in the himalayas he was like you should not be uh meditate meditating for awakening like for you you are meditating for get for clearing out that shit which is going in inside of your mind so that you can give a clear thought to any philosophical premise that you are thinking of but what people mm. what people want to do is they want to meditate to experience enlightenment you know they want to experience awakening so what they do is they tend to go deeper into the realms of meditation that could affect your kidney 
that guy was selling mm. the physical ailments of uh, meditating without a guru kidney failure mm. you can go mad and i have seen you can see if you come here if you come into india and you go uh, to these uh, big cities like varanasi which is known as the uh, the center of uh, spirituality in india you can see many monks who have gone mad Hmm. who do not have control on themselves i don't know if they are on some kind of uh, lsd or some kind of uh, psychedelics but still they they act like fucking madmen uh, so hmm. my the reason for my wisdom whatever these people see and whatever it is i give that credit to meditation because i was able to think clearly so is that the case hmm. for you is has it helped you meditation Meditation does help me with my thinking if okay. if ever I'm confused because the idea of meditation is honing in on that thought. Mm. A lot of people especially here in Australia think you know, it's just clear everything out, everything goes away, everything's just blank. Mm. In reality it's not it. It's mm. all about pondering, isn't it? It's a pondering mm. tool. Mm. It's where you nice, relaxed and you just hone in on just that single thought. Mm. And you think on that single thought. Mm. This definitely helps me out quite a bit. Mm. Mm, that has helped See, me. Too. I don't really use it for relaxing. I don't know why people seem to think it's for relaxation. Mm. It just seems a bit odd to me. Yeah. But then again, people, I notice because do you meditate in silence? Because that's that's what I do. Mm. Because uh, a lot of mm. people tend mm. to need music. Yeah. Like a certain type of music. <laughs> I've like, seen people, yeah. That's not right. Uh, it's so common for people to use music mm. to meditate when mm. reality is supposed to do in silence. How mm. can you think on the thought when there's music, music. constantly going on? Yeah. Yeah. Meditating uh, for the wrong reason. And if you are meditating with, uh, with the goal of uh, removing anxiety from your life, it helps in anxiety. But if you are if your sole goal is to eliminate anxiety or remain calm throughout the day by any chance if you miss meditation for a day you'll just panic your whole your whole day will get fucked up you'll you'll it's very foolish yeah because your mind starts working in a way that meditation is a trigger for you to remain calm and if you don't meditate mm. if you are in a meeting or if you need to go some place in a in a jiffy then you cannot just you you'll remain very uncomfortable the whole day which is which is mm. uh, what i have observed i have seen these uh, shackles onto me the first one was trying to eliminate the uh, you know remunerate i used to remunerate about about the past so trying to eliminate the past thoughts then the second shackle was i tried making this a habit that if i don't do meditation my day would be fucked and the third thing mm. was i want to attain enlightenment to become the coolest you know I want to become the coolest yeah. in this fucking room. So, but <laughs> I over I tried overcoming it, and, and I realized that you don't need that much of meditation to actually, you know, overcome the difficulties in your life. Mm. So that is what it is. Um, it is what it is. And I hope Matthew, you would have enjoyed this podcast. Oh, I always enjoy these podcasts. And this one was on social philosophy. We tried touching on to some. F- pop philosophy some movies uh, some uh, what it is gladiator some sinister um, and then some star wars and we had an interesting conversation today so the mm-hmm. video would be uplo- uploaded after an hour so the people get so excited during the live stream they are like video please upload the video please upload the video i'm like please give youtube some time to process the video at least my friends yeah after that it yeah. will get uploaded <laughs> so don't panic yeah so, this is what the thing is so we'll we'll end the stream now right because um i can't just you know consume all of my data pack because my sister is <laughs> having an examination tomorrow he needs that oh, yeah. online well, best, exam. best of luck for her yeah she is having biology i don't know biology biology or english whatever oh, yeah. yeah yeah so so this is it and you guys please come prepared with with much better questions i know you guys have the capability of ha- asking in depth questions so you can ask them so that we could also give 
insightful thing because this becomes very repetitive repetitive um, you know all these questions mm-hmm. so try to ask something which helps us too okay so we'll end this um podcast thank you so much guys for tuning in uh, matthew's uh, facebook link is in the description down below pradyuman you can share your book pradyuman mm-hmm. has written a book he's a fan of sherlock holmes so he has written a yeah. book a short story not a book sorry a novel or uh, a book is it a book not a, I, i believe it's a short story pradyuman you can share your short story with the matthew bhai bhaiya big brother big brother matthew okay yeah. okay so we'll end this podcast thank you so much for joining in